Hey, this is Mike with Make. We're at South by Southwest Crit. I'm with Patrick from Gigabot, who's uh, showing off a, an incredible new uh, Kickstarter project. Tell us about this gigantic oversized printer of yours. Okay, great. Yeah, this is our, our latest edition. It's kind of an experimental bot that we're. Um, it's right now. It just turned live on, on Kickstarter, so we're very excited and very nervous, of course. Um, so what we did here is we have a great you know, industrial 3D printer, the Gigabot. And what this is is a configuration of the Gigabot that's kind of geared a little bit more towards the maker and the home environment. So it's enclosed. So like when my cat jumps on it, he doesn't jump on the heated bed or, or chew on it. Um, it's fully networked so that you can, you can interact with it over your uh, local network in your, in your house, so either Ethernet or Wi-Fi. It has it web enabled, so you can you know control it from your tablet or your phone, and you can re monitor or print. So if you wake up four in the morning and like, is my print still going? You can just look at your phone instead of like walking into the other room. Um, yeah, we're very excited. It's 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 open source, end to end, software, hardware, everything, um, and it's written. You know, all the software is written in uh, Python or Arduino IDE, so it's really easy to mess with, and you can find all kinds of great projects from those communities. Um, it's built on a big old bone black, not Pi, even though it's Pi Day, yay, but it's built on a big old bone black, and uh, it has a seven inch touch screen. Um, and we have a whole new controller that adds a lot of functionality. And we also did a lot of little things from, that makers would love. Like we ran extra power and data ports to the extruders, the dual extruders, so that if you had something you want to mount on there, you can use our pre-run wires and you have 12 volts and 5 volts and 3.3 volts, so you can add all your own functionality without having to like tie a wire onto the outside or any of that stuff. So we're pretty excited about it. I think it's a great printer. This is, I've been printing with my house for, a long time, for like the last few months after I put it together. And we're just, I mean, we're very excited and we think people will love it. Well, cool. congrats on the launch. Now this thing, it's, uh, it's humongous. Yes. What is the actual size of the print bed? Yeah, the print volume is huge. It is 24 inches by 24 inches by 20 inches. So you can print huge things like, for instance, this is a skin of a dinosaur that was a foundry in Bastroff printed this because they're building a giant sculpture and they use this for casting. So they print it out and then they, you know, they uh, you, uh, bronze casting. So it's a, uh, you know, they destroy this as they do their casting for bronze. What's, what's, how did, what, where did this design originate from? So they did a, I think a scan, I don't know. They did a scan, I think they did a scan of an of a artistic rendering of a dinosaur. Got it. But okay. they do lots of dinosaurs. So. Yeah. Now this is this is uh, obviously one of the biggest 3D prints that I've seen in person. <laughs> well, yeah, we also have that engine block over there, which is pretty amazing. Um, I don't know if you saw that over there, but it, you know that thing took three days to print. So, so that's the other thing that we are dealing with with this printer too is that because we have huge print volumes, our air detection has to be much better than your small print. Because like if you're you know if you're printing something that's three inches by three inches and it fails in the middle and you got you know, your air printing, and you come in, you're like, shoot. But if you come back after three days and your print is broken, you're pretty pissed. So we added a lot of things like filament out detection, um, over temp, we have, uh, we have a watchdog that does, um, it's redundant temperature sensors. And so we did, a, we tried to do as much of that stuff so that we can catch your print if it, if it starts to fail and give you an alert. And so you can come and help the machine out and finish off your print successfully. So you don't have so much, any more piles of those half printed, uh, prints in your, you know, sitting in a box somewhere in your office. That you Sounds like you guys put some pretty smart technology into this. We, we hope so. We, we like the things that we, we are makers ourselves and like we are solving problems that we and our friends have. So we feel like, um, you know, these are real everyday problems. And so our team is a, a lot of us are, have a NASA background. And so we have a lot of very, very smart people on the team. And so, um, uh, yeah, I think we come up with good solutions. So. Fantastic. Well, congrats on uh, on the launch. Good luck with everything, yeah, and uh, uh, I look forward to seeing how it moves along. Yep. Yeah, thank you so much. And we, I love Make Magazine, so thank you. Thank you very much. Cool.